In a previous video, we looked at high-speed signals from the ADALM2000 signal generator using the ADALM2000's oscilloscope. In this video, we'll examine the effects of load and how SCOPY can adjust for it, and we'll also look at high-speed signals from the, the signal generator using a better connection to a signal oscilloscope. We'll begin with channel 1 of the M2K's signal generator connected to channel 1 of its oscilloscope. We're on the signal generator page, and you can see we're generating a 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak sine wave with a 1 kHz frequency, and that the load setting is set to infinite. If we look at the oscilloscope, we see that we are indeed getting a 1 volt sine wave, the peak-to-peak -peak 1 volt there in the, me in the measurements, and also we're at 200 millivolts per division, so you can just see it by the amplitude. But now, what happens if we add a 50 ohm resistor, actually a 47 ohm resistor, as a load? Well, the, the signal level drops. You can see that it is now just a 485 millivolts peak-to-peak. -peak. And if we go back to the signal generator and we set the load here to match the actual output load that we have, 50 ohms, and then go back to the oscilloscope, you can see that we're pretty much back to, to full strength. Remember, I don't have an exactly 50 ohm resistor. So that shows the effect of the of the load setting in, this, in the signal generator. The lowest you can set it is 50 ohms. If you try to set it lower, it, it won't take it. So what's going on here? The M2K signal generator has a 50 ohm output impedance. That means there's literally a 50 ohm series resistor in its output stage. So if you have a load represented by a 47 ohm resistor in this case, uh, you simply get a voltage divider. So, so the voltage you see at output is divided by, the, by R1 and R2, R1 being the series resistor inside the M2K and R2 being the resistor you, you have representing your load. The load adjustment in the M2K's GUI doesn't change the resistor. The output impedance has to remain 50 ohms. All it can do is adjust the signal level to try to get signal levels to match. So the purpose of this load setting is to let you tell the signal generator the the impedance of your of the signal that you're trying to drive so it can try to match it and then make the signal levels be what you expect them to be from, from the signal generator. Are there limits to the compensation that the ADALM2000 can do? Let's, let's try some things. Let's change the amplitude to 4 volts, peak to peak, and see if it's still correct in the oscilloscope. And it is, about 4.8 something, close enough. And now let's go back to the signal generator and try 5.5 volts. And if you go back to the oscilloscope, the, the sine wave is now capped. The compensation thus has some limits to, to what it can accomplish. So if you're driving a low impedance load, like a 50 ohm load, you know, don't expect to use the full signal strength of the signal generator to, to do it. So why 50 ohms? It turns out that 50 ohm impedance is common as the input impedance in communications equipment. And it's pretty common to connect signal generators to communications equipment. So they're designed to, to match impedances with this equipment. It's also common to use 50 ohm coax to connect signal generators to oscilloscopes in order to test the signal generator. The uh, impedances should match in this case, and so on the oscilloscope side, it's pretty usually the case that you use a 50 ohm through terminator, or some oscilloscopes have a setting to change their input impedance to be 50 ohms. And then on the signal generator side, you set its load to be 50 ohms, and then both sides have the same impedance, and the signal levels will match. The reason having the same impedance is important is that if impedances are different, you can get signal reflections that, that mess up the, the view of high-speed signals. So what I've done is built a cable from 50 ohm coax that I can use to connect the M2K signal generator to my Siglent oscilloscope. The cable's 50 ohms. And so on the Sig Siglent oscilloscope side, it'll be connected using a 50 ohm through terminator. And then on the M2K side, it'll be connected directly to the header pins. So there's no breadboard involved. And this should allow me to get as good a view as I can of the M2K signals at high speeds. So let's take a look.
So we have the M2K signal generator con connected to the Siglent oscilloscope. You see the Siglent, the Siglent display in the upper left and Scopey controlling the signal generator in the lower right. To start with, we're looking at a sine wave, one volt peak to peak, uh, frequency of 100 kilohertz. And uh, notice that the load setting is set to 50 ohms. So this, we have in, you know, impedance matching be between the the M2K and the oscilloscope. So un unsurprisingly, this 100 kilohertz sine wave looks fine. Let's let's go higher. So we'll, we'll jump all the way to a, a megahertz, since the, the low frequencies tend to be okay. So one megahertz still still looks really really good. Uh, two megahertz, no troubles. Five megahertz, still looking pretty good. Uh, Ten megahertz. Starting to maybe show a little bit of waviness in the sine sine wave, but 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 not too bad. And then 20 megahertz, and we start to see some artifacts. Um, and finally, 30 megahertz, where the sine wave doesn't look much like a sine wave anymore. Let's try something intermediate, like say 27 megahertz. So you can see that it's it's got 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 some issues but you know dropping down to 10 megahertz you know things things look pretty pretty decent so let's go back down to one megahertz and switch to a triangle wave and adjust the oscilloscope so that clearly looks quite quite good at one megahertz so let's go up to two megahertz and five megahertz and you can see it's starting to be rounded a little bit at the at the top. So maybe let's try three megahertz. A little bit of rounding, but not too bad. Um, two megahertz. Yeah, that's. And finally back to one megahertz. So let's go up from there. So it, it shows a little bit of rounding at the at the top when when at higher at higher speeds. So here's five megahertz again, ten megahertz. Um, starting to see some troubles, and 20 megahertz not so good, and 30 megahertz not not really usable. Let's go back to one megahertz and uh, pick a square wave and adjust the oscilloscope. So we can see we have a square wave with with some overshooting. Um, I, I guess I should say that this my oscilloscope is a Siglent SDS 1104XE. It is a 100 megahertz bandwidth scope and with only a single channel in use. It has a one giga sample per second sampling rate, and so you know the, this overshoot and ringing could still be in uh, in. You know, it could, it could be my cable not being all that great, and we can get some some idea if we change the scope's bandwidth. Right now, it's set to a, to its full 100 um, megahertz bandwidth. If I change bandwidth limit to 20 megahertz, then some of that high frequency content goes away. So it's a little unclear, you know, whether where where that high frequency con content is coming from. But you know, other than that, we have a we have a square wave. So let's try going up in frequency. And uh, we're, by the way, we're back to full bandwidth on the oscilloscope. So two megahertz and, uh, and now five megahertz. And so, you know, quite a, quite a bit of waviness there. And uh, 10, 10 megahertz, we're starting to see um, jitter on, on the leading end or trailing edge. So that's not too good. 20 megahertz just doesn't look like a square wave at all anymore. And notice that it's actually grown in amplitude, which is a little hard to explain. And uh, 30 megahertz is a complete mess. So let's go back down, um, get to one megahertz again, and let's go down further from there. And so one megahertz down to 100 kilohertz. And so that that overshoot and 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 ringing is not really going away. Uh, and that's to be expected. There's a lot of high frequency con content at the edges. In fact, let's go all the way down to one kilohertz. And you can see, i zoom out a little bit. And now we're zoomed out so much you don't really see it, but the, the, the stuff at the edges, but it's still, but it's still there. So one interesting question is what's the rise time of this signal? 
and if we turn on the scope's measurement, it'll it'll measure it for us, I think. So it's showing a rise time of about 10.4 nanoseconds. With with this 100 megahertz bandwidth scope, the fastest rise you're likely to see is maybe four nanoseconds. So uh, there's some evidence that the rise time of the square wave from from the M2K isn't all that high, but we're kind of at the the borderline of what the scope can show. So bottom line is the the square waves may be a little funny on the edges and and they start to have some real quality issues at the higher higher frequencies. The sine and the triangles were a little bit better at higher frequencies, especially the sine wave, which seemed perfectly usable at five ten megahertz, which is which is nice because sine waves are often used to analyze linear linear systems. So the M2K is useful at at, for, for that at pretty high frequencies, but as I said in the previous video, you know, square, square waves, you might want to be a little bit careful at, at high frequencies. Now let's take a look at some of the other waveforms, and let's do it at, say, oh, 100 kilohertz, and turn the measurement off. So what else do we have? Um, we have uh, rising, rising ramp sawtooth. And so you, know, so you can see there's a little bit of an issue with the edges there. Maybe I should zoom in on that. Well, that's not that easy to do. Um, maybe I won't do that. And the uh, falling ramp sign uh, sawtooth, which is much easier to zoom in on. So you can see issues that are similar to the square wave, and that's because you have that sudden edge. It's really just the same. In fact, the, the rise time here um, ought to be about the same, and it is, you know, according to the measurement from the scope, about 10, 10 nanoseconds. So that's that. And um, stair step actually looks pretty pretty good. And then there's one more waveform that is in, in this waveform menu, this trapezoidal. And what it does is allow you to sort of dial in rise times and fall times. So the frequency is no longer determined the in, in the way that it was before, but but instead these timing these timing settings here d determine what this waveform looks like. So right now I have it set to 100 nanoseconds of rise time and 100 nanoseconds of fall time of falling time, and and also the amount of time that it spends high and low. So maybe we can see the effect of that by changing it. So let's make the rise time steeper by reducing that number, um, 10, 20. Um, and, and so on. So you get an idea how this works. We can take this back out to 50, make the other one go to, you know, to 500 nanoseconds. So, so you can see how it affects the waveform pretty well. So one thing that's kind of interesting is what's the minimum. So here it, it's set to 10 nanoseconds. If we zoom in on that, um, well, we search, first of all, we see a waveform that isn't all that clean. And let's see what the measurement thinks. And, and it's measuring the rise time. Yeah, it's about 20 nanoseconds. Let's do a single capture, because a lot of this is jitter. So that's a, sig a single capture of it, and another one, and another one. And it's showing the rise time varying quite a bit. Um, so anyway, it's kind of clear that it's probably not really doing a 10 nanosecond rise time. Let's change that to something a little easier. Um, let's try 50 nanoseconds and do some single captures again. I better zoom out a little, do a single capture. And so the rise time it's measuring is 40. It may have a different definition of the of the top and bottom points of, of a rise time, but you can see it's increasing. If I um, make this um, 200 nanoseconds, zoom out some more and do single captures, so you so you can see it's it's not agreeing with the scope's measurement too well, but it's certainly having having an effect, even at these slightly fast rise times. So that's what the trapezoidal um, wave waveform looks like. Now one that last thing we should look at is signal levels. So we're back to a sine wave, one volt peak to peak, one megahertz, and still driving our 50 ohm load on the oscilloscope. That remember that's a a 50 ohm pass through terminator. And so on the oscilloscope, the uh, the measurement shows a one volt peak to peak, which is good, and an RMS value of about 345. The correct value for that would be about 350 millivolts. And so all in all, the signal level is looking pretty well matched. Um, the, the signal generator is doing a good job at, 
giving the expected level for a 50 ohm load. But let's go up in frequency and see what's, what happens. So let's get up to 10 megahertz and I'll zoom out a little bit and you can see the signal levels are still quite good. I guess we should make sure that we're on full bandwidth on the scope. Yes, we are. And uh, that's what we want for this. And so now uh, up to 20, 20 megahertz and it's it's doing it's kind of holding its own. It's got a little bit of a drop. Now you're going to see some drop anyway, even though this is a hundred megahertz scope. As the frequency gets higher, there's still going to be some some diminishment just because of the bandwidth of the oscilloscope. But this seems fine. And then 30 30 uh, megahertz yeah, dropped a little bit more. So I have to do some math to decide whether that's in line with uh with the bandwidth of the scope. But but I, I don't think it's a problem regardless. And now if we set the scope to 20 megahertz bandwidth limit, we'd expect the the wave to get lower in amplitude and it does. And that's the filter in, that's the effect of the filter in the oscilloscope limiting the in, incoming bandwidth to 20 megahertz. You also see the signal start to look more like a sine wave, but that's that's false. The, the, the oscilloscope's now filtering out the high frequency content of the incoming waveform that's making it look funny. So the this is the the full bandwidth view I think is the better view of what of of what the sig signal generator is actually generating. So I think this is a good time to stop. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this to be helpful.